Oh hi, I'm the Heretic. Happy May 4th, Heretics. It's officially Star Wars Day. I don't know why, because the original movie came out on May 25th, 1977, not May 4th. Anyways, what Star Wars is doing nowadays is quite interesting. In its time, it was a revolution in storytelling using special effects while delivering on compelling, interesting characters and settings. Suffice to say, it was awesome. But today, we get to watch a pop culture icon go down in flames. Disney has bought the franchise for $4 billion and has since released three movies and two TV shows, as well as a few <laughs> games. Things aren't looking good to say the least. The Force Awakens was okay. Rogue One was good, but it didn't wow anyone. And The Last Jedi... <laughs> When your Rotten Tomatoes audience score is worse than The Phantom Menace, you know you really screwed up. According to another YouTuber, Mark Sargent, the audience score is actually a lot worse. Since Rotten Tomatoes doesn't count audience reviews with only half a star, the real audience score would be around 24%, which is bad. Then there's the fact that despite making $1.3 billion in the box office, The Last Jedi might have actually lost money. I'll link another video by World Class Bullshitters which explains this in more detail. I'll leave it to you to look up how well Star Wars merchandise is selling. Here's a hint, it's not. Also, let's be honest here, nobody's excited for Solo. So things aren't looking so bright in a galaxy far far away. Now how can this be? Several reasons actually. The new characters were poorly written and conceived to fill a diversity checklist. The protagonist, Mary Sue, only has her incredible power because Waman. Characters on both sides act like idiots. There's blatant contempt and disrespect for the franchise's past. Characters acting completely out of character. Ben Swolo. Disney is trying to force a social justice agenda down our throats. The First Order is not a credible threat. Derivative and unoriginal storylines. Pre-production being rushed and J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson, the directors for Force Awakens and The Last Jedi respectively, not communicating. They're trying too hard to capture lightning in a bottle again. Porgs! All of these things and more contribute, so it's not one cause. But let me add my own hypothesis to what's going wrong. You see, they aren't resonating with audiences because they were made at the wrong time, at the wrong historical turning. If you haven't seen my series on the fourth turning, go watch it right now so you know what the heck I'm talking about. Spoilers for Star Wars to follow, just a heads up. To quickly review, history is a repeating cycle, lasting roughly 80 years. In each cycle, or seculum, there are four turnings, each lasting roughly 20 years. What makes these turnings important in the context of Star Wars and storytelling in general is that each turning is characterized by cultural attitudes and you can predict what themes would resonate with your audience. Perhaps it'll be more clear with an example. The original Star Wars did it right. In A New Hope, a nobody farm boy destroys the Death Star using only his intuition. The theme is the triumph of mysticism over technology. As indicated when Luke Skywalker turns off his targeting computer to destroy the Death Star when a voice in his head said so. And it works! A New Hope came out in 1977, when America was still in its second turning, a time of diminishing respect for institutions and rising religiosity in mysticism. The first, second, and third Great Awakenings in America, times of religious evangelism and revivalism occurred during these second turnings. Is it any wonder that a movie about space wizards defeating high technology with feels resonates at a time when Buddhism, neo-paganism, and witchcraft are on the rise? That's not to say you have to validate their beliefs. The Empire Strikes Back explored the dark side of the Force, with which Darth Vader committed great atrocities. Return of the Jedi ultimately comes down to the Emperor trying to tempt Luke to the dark side, as one man's disposition in the Force is more important than the ships and soldiers the Emperor will lose in the battle going on just outside. The story was simple, and I might have been too young to experience it in theaters, but we loved every minute of it. But here's the thing about a movie that resonates in a turning. You can't make it again, at least not for another 80 years. 
J.J. Abrams tried with The Force Awakens, but once the honeymoon on new Star Wars movie that isn't terrible wore off, people realized it was just a retelling of A New Hope. A New Hope couldn't be made in 2015. We're in the middle of a fourth turning, not a second turning. The themes of magic over technology just don't resonate. What is resonating with today's audience? If you can believe it, the prequel trilogy. The bad Star Wars movies panned by critics and fans alike. Okay, Revenge of the Sith wasn't that bad, but you know what I mean. These otherwise unpopular movies have become cult classics in recent years. Mostly for the memes, I mean, the prequel meme subreddit has over half a million subscribers. But that's not all. There were also all the articles and videos in 2014 and 2015 singing the prequels' praises. Now, a lot of that might have just been YouTubers and writers shilling for Disney to hype up The Force Awakens, but there has to be more to it. I think the prequels were made too early. They were meant for our time. They were meant for a fourth turning. But they were released during a third turning. Make no mistake, we're in the middle of a fourth turning right now. A time of maximum institutional weakness in the face of an existential crisis to society. Now what happened in the prequel trilogy? In between Jar Jar's poop jokes, Anakin monologuing about sand, and the Senate telling Jedi Knights to do it, we have a societal existential crisis unfolding right before our eyes. Through masterful maneuvering made by mysterious masterminds, the good guys are tricked by a false flag tax rebellion into promoting Senator Palpatine to Chancellor, then giving him even more executive power to command a slave army of clones led by space monks with zero military experience. The politicians then welcome it eagerly when the Senate declares himself Emperor of the New Galactic Empire. It's for your protection, he promises. The corrupt and stagnant old order is found unable to deal with the existential crisis, so the people rally around the new order. For better or for worse, the galaxy far, far away moves through a great gateway in history as society is reinvigorated and re-energized around the new order. This is a fourth turning to a T. It is this crisis, this transformation and reinvigoration of society that the prequels tried to capture but came too early for. This is why the prequels are resonating today, and why the sequel trilogy isn't. You see, the sequel trilogy, that is to say The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, wasn't made for a fourth turning audience. In the opening minutes of The Force Awakens, Poe Dameron mocks Kylo Ren, and General Hux has a temper tantrum. In the opening minutes of The Last Jedi, Poe Dameron mocks General Hux, and General Hux has a temper tantrum. You could chalk that up to bad writing, taking away whatever menace or threat your villains had, but I call it cynicism. Cynicism and a lack in belief of the efficacy of institutional power. We're seeing themes of the third turning at play, low institutional power and rampant cynicism. But it's not going to resonate with today's fourth turning audience. The First Order is no existential threat. They're presented in the movies as clowns, LARPing as the Galactic Empire. You got Star Destroyers, Stormtroopers, TIE Fighters, and the Darth Vader wannabe. But they aren't a threat. As for Mary Sue's, yeah, that's not going to resonate with any turning. Now we can see how the Star Wars movies can appeal to audiences. The potential is there. You just need to hit the right themes and explore the right ideas. For today's audiences, you need a crisis an honest-to-goodness threat, and a great coming together of disparate factions and ideas. Is it possible for Solo or the new Star Wars sequel trilogy movie to do this? I don't think so, for three reasons. 1. Episode 9 is poorly set up to appeal to the fourth turning. Perhaps Leia could be deposed as leader of the Resistance for being ineffectual and incompetent, and then there's a coming together, but... Beyond that, well, there's no crisis. The crisis has already passed, in fact. The New Republic is gone. Though to be fair, the New Republic only existed to be obliterated by Starkiller Base, so who cares? Two, they've already lost a lot of goodwill after The Last Jedi. So even if J.J. Abrams does do everything right, which he won't, nobody will believe it to be a good movie. 
3, nobody wants to see Solo, so who cares? So for the time being, we're just waiting for Disney's stranglehold over Star Wars to end, so they can sell it to some new studio. That way, they can actually tell stories that people want to see without being weighed down by social justice crusade of the week nonsense. In the year 2030, roughly, we'll enter a first turning, a time of high social cohesion and institutional trust and power, and you'll need to speak to this if you want to appeal to your future audience. So let me summarize. Original trilogy, made for a second turning and played during a second turning. Prequel trilogy, made for a fourth turning, played during a third turning. Sequel trilogy, made for a third turning, played during a fourth turning. The original trilogy weren't classics because of masterful storytelling, but because they spoke of and to the times. Even if audiences aren't consciously aware of it, they demand that your stories reflect today. Star Wars is not doomed to failure by audience expectations or nitpicking. All you need to do is tell a decent story, write good characters, and keep the themes relevant. I promise that you'll find catching lightning in a bottle again isn't that hard. Questions? Comments? Critique? How not excited are you for Solo in Episode 9? Am I still wasting your guys' time talking about nonsense? Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.